Hey, what's up guys? It is Vex Viewer, and today I'm coming at you with another video. I've been going back and like taking a look at some of the videos that I should have done and I've never got around to. One of those videos was a world building video. I never touched on history. I talked about uh, cultures. I talked about um, setting. I talked about making your world feel alive, but I never actually dove into the history component of world building. And that is what I'll be doing today. Okay. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment and give me your thoughts on history and how that plays into world building. So what exactly am I talking about when I say history and world building, right? Well, you have your story that you want to tell, and there's a story that takes place before the story, right? The history of your world that takes place before the narrative that you want to tell. Unless you have a story where a God comes out of the sky and snaps his fingers, then your characters are walking down the street, right? Uh, -huh. unless that's the case, that means a story took place before your story, right? Things happen, things occurred before the main characters are now on the journey that you want to tell. It's important because what happened before will dictate culture, government, decision-making of the people, all that will come from the past, what came before. Yeah, that's important. Now you want to make sure that you're referencing what happened before over the course of the story because that will ring true to the audience because that's how we reference the world. And I'll dive into that a little bit later. Because again, history is what made the world we live in today, right? So that's the case in the stories you're telling. What came before the history will dictate your story. And if you want your story to not feel flat and boring, you're gonna want to reference what happened before history. It all plays into it. It's important. If your world is a thousand years old or tens of thousands of years old, or a hundred years old, it will have transformed over time. Okay. Things will have happened to change your world. Big events, big moments took place in the past that changed and transformed your world, whether it's leadership change, whether it's a environmental catastrophe, stuff like that. All right. It's all important. If you don't reference the past in your storylines, your story will feel flat, not real and fake. If your characters were to disappear, the viewers should get the sense that things will continue on. It'll be okay. The world won't cease to exist. There's an actual world here. People have lived. And even if the characters are not here, there's a world here that is rich and that is thriving and that is real. Nobody wants to experience a flat, unrealistic world. Okay. So let's keep history in mind when we're writing our stories. Now this video isn't actually about, um, a timeline or how to make your history, right? If it was, I say things like, you know, Create a timeline, map it out, make sure it makes sense. Make sure you're keeping track of your dates. What are the different ages of time, right? And once you come up with that, then you decide the big events. When was your world first colonized? Who did it and why? What are the territories? What are the conflicts? Are there any wars between nations or civilizations? Were there any environmental catastrophes that took place? What transformed the world? That's what you'd be thinking about. But this isn't really about that per se, okay? It's not about how to make one. It's more about when you have your history mapped out, when and where do you reference it? How much do you reference it? How do you make it feel real and natural? And um, how often should you reference it in your story, the history that came before? That's more about what I'm talking about here. And I'll be using Ruby to explain that because it's a show with a lot of problems. I like to talk about where things went wrong and Ruby is a good blank canvas to use to explain where things went wrong and how you could have better constructed the writing to reference the history. Okay. So first and foremost, does your history make sense? Okay. Are there any contradictions that are bumping against what you've done? Okay. First and foremost, right? That's number one. Okay. Number two, use real life, right? Make sure you use real life because real life is something we've all experienced. We can connect real life to your story. We'll connect to the story quicker, right? However, we talk about history in real life should be how the character talk about it. If it happens in real life, we will be quicker to accept it in your story. If that makes sense, right? Another thing to keep in mind, history is eyewitness, right? Eyewitness accounts, recordings, documentation, so on and so forth. Um, the reason why we know that George Washington was the first president is because people were there and they saw it and they documented what happened. All right. I can't walk into a lab and pour chemicals into a freaking flask and prove to you um, that George Washington was the first president. Okay. I can't do that in a lab or anywhere. Okay. 
is a fact. We know it happened because folks were there. So keep in mind when you're talking about history, when the characters are talking about history, it's eyewitness stuff. Okay. So they can only know so much, right? We know that George Washington was the first president. We don't know what was going on in his mind at the time. He can write down what he thought at the time, but that's still not the truth, right? There's limitations to what we know. So keep in mind that history is eyewitness. Unless there's like a, a narrator that knows all, like an all knowing narrator, that's one thing, right? So those are some things to keep in mind. Now let's actually like apply that to a show a Ruby. First of all, does Ruby's timeline make sense? Do things make sense? Okay. Let's talk about it. Right in Ruby. What do we know? Ignore uh, Salem's origin story. Ignore all that God stuff. Let's just talk about what we know from the history that we're told about, right? From the world of remnants, from the characters, when the show starts, what do they know? Okay. Ignore Salem stuff. Well, we know there was a hundred year period of tension. Then there was a 10 year great war about, about 80 years of peace. And then the show starts. All right. Let me say that again. hundred years of tension, 10 years, great war, about 80 years of peace. And I'll talk about why we know that's about 80 years. And then the story. So we have about 200 years of history that we're told about, forget about the Salem stuff. Keep that aside. Focus on the 200 years before the show starts a hundred years of tension, right? Well, during that period, what happened? Why was there tension? Well, according to the world of remnants, it was because of mistral. They had slave labor, poor treatment of citizens, and they were trying to push their way of life onto other people. And that was kind of annoying. Okay. So that's where the tension comes from. Mistral had an emperor and this emperor was working with Mantle, they formed a pack where Mantle helped Mistral with technological advancements and Mistral gave Mantle some resources that were not available in the cold tundra. Now Vale is really the one that had issues with the slave labor, the treatment of citizens and how they went about operating. Now what we don't hear during this description, what we don't hear is any official dates, right? Things happened during that time no real idea of when the reason why there's no official dates is because the writer said that anytime you have official dates and stuff, that's when plot holes come up. So in his mind, it's better to avoid official dates, keep it vague. That way you can focus on the story. Now, this is probably one of the most asinine things I've heard a writer say to avoid plot holes. They went away from official dates, which sounds crazy to me. If anything, you want to make sure that your dates and time periods make sense. Make sure everything lines up. That makes more sense than to ignore it. And you'll see why a little bit later. There was an incident that took place in Mantle where again, no official dates that led to the abolishment of art and expression. Now the world of remnant heavily implies that this was a grim issue. Does that track? Uh, I'd say no, considering the Atlas world of remnant said that grim were kept at bay because of the harsh winters and the geography. So this must've been a hell of an incident that would have caused them to take this drastic route. So eventually Mistral decided they wanted to branch out to the West and they came up onto territory. Vale kingdom were already starting to inhabit and colonize and settle into at this point. This led to a conflict between the two regions and war broke out. Okay. So that's how the great war started. It was Mistral trying to expand their territory to the West and they came into contact with Vale. So during the 10 year war, great war, humans and faunus came together, came closer. There was technological advancements. And during this period of time, a lot of people lost their lives in their homes due to grim attacks because of constant fear, um, constant negativity going on. Now the war came to an end in Bakuo when the King of Vale, the great King of Vale laid waste to the mistral and mantle forces. According to legend, keep that word in mind, legend, he had a big say in how the war ended He's a great King, a great warrior, so on and so forth. Now I have a question for you about this great King of Vale. Where is his statue? Where is his monument? Where is the plaque? Where is anything in Vale that references this great king? 
this king did what he did 80 years ago, around 80, not a thousand years ago, not 500 years ago, 80. That's nothing in terms of history, right? Great King of Ale, they did all these great things, ended the war. There's no statue, no monuments, no nothing that we can see. Now, somebody might say, is that really a big deal? No, but what I'm trying to get across for you is little things like that add up. Little moments where you reference the past, it goes a long way, making your world feel alive, making it feel real and lived in. It may seem small, but every little sliver will add up to the big pie that is your world building, okay? You should be referencing stuff like that. In the real world, a great warrior or a great king would have had a statue reference or something, right? Doesn't even have to be like a big thing or big exposition. The monument or the statue could just be there and we see it, this guy's important. This history here is rich, is baked into the story here. There's things that took place before the story, before the main story, right? That's important. A show that does a good job of this is Game of Thrones, right? Every location, every castle, the history is baked in and you get a sense of what came before and it makes you feel more invested. It feels more immersive. That's what we're going for. We want the world to feel alive and real and lived in beyond your main characters, beyond the characters on the screen. If it's happening in the real world, it should be happening in the story you're telling to a certain extent, make the audience feel like this is a real lived in place, okay? So yes, I would love to see a statue or some type of monument for the great king. The way they're describing him, he's a great man. Now show that in the show proper. It's only been 80 years. It's not a thousand years. 80 years ago, a great warrior ended the war and there's no reference to him at all in Vale. Even Legend of Korra, there's a big ass statue of Aang, right? Now, that statue is kind of like a nod to the previous show. It's like a nod to the characters that came before. But even so, that statue, it shows that there was a past, okay? There's history there. There's a man who was important that came before. And all that helps to build a world that feels real and alive and lived in. And that's things that folks should be keeping in mind when they're telling a story, referencing the past in ways like that. Legends say that the day that the great king of Vale took a stand in vacuo, it was the single deadliest day of the war. I'm a little confused here. Um, historians say that they're not sure what happened on that day. Historians will tell you most of these stories are nothing but grandiose hyperbole. It was 80 years ago. You should know in a world where we have aircrafts and holograms and um, advanced technology, you mean to tell me 80 years ago, they don't know what the fuck happened? It's 80 years. There were people who were there that saw what happened. Again, eyewitness, that's what history is. There were people who were there. Some of those people are still alive. It was 80 years ago. What do you mean historians? What do you mean legend? Considering what we see now, considering we have airplanes, aircrafts, holograms, mech suits, you mean to tell me 80 years ago, there wasn't a camera? Come on, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't track. You should know what the hell happened 80 years ago. So that's what I'm talking about. Make sure it makes sense, make sure it's believable, reference the real world. That's the easy way to make it make sense. How it happened in the real world, with how technology advanced, that'll help you shape your history so it feels like it rings true. Like this whole legends and historians don't know 80 years ago what happened. Folks saw what happened, they were on the battlefield, they know what the king did. It was 80 years ago, not a thousand years. We know what happened in War World One. We know what happened in War World Two, right? Better than they did apparently, because um, that was beyond 80 years for us. I don't buy this notion that historians aren't sure what happened that day 80 years ago. It doesn't track for me. It's a war. You should know what happened. This should not be some type of myth or legend. It's only been 80 years, okay? Make it make sense. So after the Great War, the leaders of the regions got together on the island of Vital and it came up with new laws and new beliefs and new governments and new academies. They abolished slavery. And the King of Vale put his most trusted advisors at the academies. All right, let's talk about the Vital Festival. Uh, the Vital Festival takes place every two years. The Vital Festival is a celebration of peace amongst the four kingdoms. 
they are preparing for the 40th Vital Festival. And that's how we know it's been about 80 years. All right. Because uh, it happens every two years. 40 times 2, 80. About 80 plus from the Great War to the show proper. 80 years of peace around that time. So every two years, the Vital Festival is in a different location. Question. Where did the Vital Festival take place two years ago? Why do I ask that? Well, the Olympics just happened. It took place in France. Where did it take place before? Tokyo, Japan. How do I know that? Because they would not shut up about it. Every second of the day, when they talked about the Olympics, they referenced what happened before. They referenced the past Olympics all the damn time. It's natural. It's real. It's how we construct narratives. It's how we construct different storylines within sports and within conversation. They're always referencing what the hell happened last time. Okay. We always do that. So why in the show at no point do they reference where it took place last time? Again, that might sound small, insignificant, but little things like that go a long way to making things feel like a real lived in place. Okay. I know that sounds like a small thing, right? But all those things add up. It should reference the past. Oh yeah. This happened two years ago. It took place in Atlas. So and so one referencing what happened in the past will make the audience connect quicker. Okay. Just because it feels natural. It's what we do. We're always building narratives. We're always talking about what happened previously. Okay. That's how we talk. It's how we discuss things. We're always referencing what happened in the past. So you should be doing that in your stories. Reference what happened in the past. Talk about it. Highlight it. You want your world to feel real, dynamic, and lived in. So do what we do in real life. Reference the past, talk about it, highlight it in a way that feels real. Talk about who won last time. Talk about what happened last time. It doesn't have to be like long, drawn out scenes, but quick mention here and there, a quick reference here and there will make the audience feel like this is a real world. If we don't do that, if we ignore the history, if we don't reference it, it's going to feel fake and unrealistic. We are constantly referencing the past in real life. So your characters should be doing the same. Here's an example in the story of what I'm talking about. Remember when Weiss references the CCT? Wow! I forget how big the transmit tower looks up close. You should see the one in Atlas. That was the first one, right? Correct. Atlas developed the cross-continental transmit system to allow the four kingdoms to communicate with one another. It was their gift to the world after the Great War. She talked about what it is, who made it, and why, and when. All right, CCT, gift to the world after the Great War. We know the time, and we know the why. That works. That's what they did there. But please reference the past as much as you can to make your world feel dynamic, real. Now, according to Weiss, the CCT was developed right after the Great War. So they've had the internet for 80 years, longer than we had it. We've had the internet for 40 years. They've had it for 80 years. Now, here's the issue I have with that. Can you imagine this scenario? Hey, honey, the internet is down. Why? A tower fell. A tower, one tower. Yes, honey, one tower for 80 years of having the internet with the advanced technology and all that stuff. No matter how you slice it, no matter how you look at it, that is very stupid. Okay. It's stupid. No matter what, I don't care about what story you're going for. It doesn't make any sense, right? There's no way anybody with half a brain would allow that to happen. I don't buy that. It doesn't track to have an advanced society have 80 years of internet and nobody say, Hey, wait a minute. We should fix this hole. One tower goes down and the entire network is lost. That is stupid. They should have done something different. That does not work. Yeah, there's no way around that. It's unforgivable and something you should not write to be completely honest with you. Another thing, Amity Coliseum, the location of the tournament. You can have references to the past winners, references to the past competitors, stuff like that. Small stuff that'll go a long way. Mountain Glen. Expansion of Vale, no dates around that. Nicholas Schnee, the guy that founded the Schnee Dust Company, there should be more references to him. He hasn't been dead for that long. So the big thing here, folks, if you're going to go through the trouble of creating a history for your world, which you should do, you should absolutely have a mapped out history, things that took place before your story, reference it as much as you can in a way that feels natural and real. It's going to help your world feel real and that's what you want. Okay. Reference the history, bake it into the story. And I'm telling you, your world will feel more real.
It doesn't have to be big stuff. This small references, small highlights will help to make your world feel real. To recap, make sure there's no contradictions. Make sure what happens in your show lines up with your history, right? We're always talking about history. We're always referencing the past. Even in the freaking Olympics, for example, always talking about what happened before. We're always talking about the past winners, right? Show the history, put it on display, whether that's statues, monuments, buildings, artwork, uh, anything that you can see visually, let it reference the past in a way that makes sense, in a way that feels like the world is large and there's a history and a story that came before the story. History is still with us. History is still around us. So, you know, let that be the case in the environment, in the show, and in the things that the characters will interact with. History is eyewitness or captured. It's captured, it's recorded, it's documented. Does it track, right? All right, so that's all I have for this video. Do me a favor, um, leave your thoughts. Tell me how you would do history, any type of things I may have left out with Ruby or in general, give me your thoughts below. Subscribe to the channel, give me your thoughts on history and world building and referencing and how you would go about it. Um, do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Give me your thoughts in the comments below and I will talk to you later.